Yeah, it's going to vary person to person. At the end of the day, if I want to keep living, it's not because I've got some intellectual answer in my head to anything. If I want to keep living, it's because I know Matt loves me and, you know, die. people love me and I matter to them. And if I'm not here, they'll be sad. And I love them too. At, at the end of the day, it's about love and relationships that enable us to go on when everything in our head says, I can't get out of bed again. I can't draw another breath. So it's community that really rallies us to a point that we can reach. I mean, what, what do you, you talk about that. Talk about what you were saying, huh? Um, number one, I agree with James wholeheartedly. If you can't hug the person, you hold their hand. If you can't hold their hand, you stay as close to them as you can. You talk to them. You let them know that you're there, that you're here to try to help them through this very difficult moment. It, it's all expressing love and concern. There's no question about that. However, I am not one to ever allow someone to say to me, God did this to me, why me? And I found the, the real answer to my own personal faith when I was 32 years old and suddenly lost the use of my legs without reason. I had two children at home, one who was almost three months old, and I was told I had a, an inoperable spinal tumor. And... I did not say to God, why me? I turned to God because I believe in God and God's goodness, and I asked God to help me find the strength to live until I can't live anymore, to be an example that my children will always be able to remember with pride, that they will always know that I really do believe in God and in the power of God's healing, if not to cure at least to heal me enough to live out the rest of my life. The next morning I found out I had a slipped disc, um, which made me feel very happy, I must tell you. But this, this, is, this is my response. I was, listen, you spend the night thinking you're dying. It's, it's not pleasant to find out the next morning it's a slipped disc and you can have surgery and have it fixed. That's a miracle. Um, but in, in a very real sense, this is what I do. And if you've ever read Harold Kushner's book, Why, Good, Why Bad Things Happen to Good People, he, exp he really explains basically we are machines, wonderful machines that God created. But things go wrong. And just like metal rusts, there are bacteria, etc., that attack our body and diseases that attack our body. That doesn't mean that God is doing something to us. And I guarantee you, if you have someone who was killed in a car accident in your family whom you love deeply, it wasn't God who made that other driver do what they did. And I don't believe in evil incarnate or in good incarnate other than the evil or good that we as human flesh and blood choose to do or do without choosing sometimes. And um, it's a, I, I promised only one other question, I'm sorry. Uh, and we, we'd, we'd, I think it's, I, I agree, it's important. Some, sometimes church people, I don't know if you have this in temple, church people, they see someone who's hurting and they so desperately want to help. And so they say something, but what they may say may either be a lie, an unintended lie, or something that's actually hurtful. We attach God to it. So we'll say, I mean, I think I told you about the funeral that I did I was standing next to the father at the graveside, and they had just buried his two-year-old son. And the grief was horrible. And a woman walks up smiling. And I'm thinking, how could you smile? And she said, God needed him in heaven more than you needed him here. Well, that's an attempt to say something comforting, but it came off as bizarre, cruel, uh, and it doesn't mean we don't say anything, but there's always something better we can say. We can say, I love you. I'm thinking about you. It, it's not, I always counsel against saying, I know how you feel. You may have, say, been through a divorce, but that can feel very different from another person's divorce. So, and to say, I know how you feel, in a way it cuts the other person off. If you want to know how they feel, say, how do you feel? They'll tell you. See? So don't say, I know how you feel. Say, how, how do you feel? And Listen. And love. So our role is to love, not to give some theological rationale, which is important. Okay, last question.
are demons autonomous or do they do God's bidding? They do not do God's bidding. They are, uh, there's the story in, in uh, the Gospel of Mark, right, where the guy is uh, in the cemetery and he's possessed by a legion of demons. The, we don't know about these things, right? There's no, no document that explains demonology and angelology. They wrote some in the Middle Ages, but these were people guessing and speculating about such things. But at least in that New Testament witness, at times it seems to be that there are demonic forces and they are in league with one another. They all have the same purpose, and that's to create havoc on earth. You know, do they do, as C.S. Lewis imagines in screw tape letters, you know, writing each other, consulting how best to bring somebody down? We don't know such things. But they always act contrary to what God would want, sort of by definition. God never does evil, but the demonic is always about the infiltration of evil into God's good world or the perversion of God's good world into what is evil. I have a slightly different perspective. <clears throat> I firmly believe that God created the universe. And that means that God created good and God created evil. There is no other being to blame. But God isn't doing good and God isn't doing evil. It's being done by people who inhabit this world with us. And God is our source of guidance and strength to be able to stand up in front of the bad things that happen and to be able to enjoy the good things. So we, we do not have within normative Jewish thought this battle between good and evil forces. The battle between good and evil is within each and every one of us. It is our hope that we are able to overcome that inclination to do bad. And it exists in all of us. And we hope that that inclination to do good is what will entice us most of the time at least. And that also resides within us. Judaism is a religious theology that believes strongly in God, strongly in some kind of reward and punishment, and strongly in personal responsibility for what we do. All right. We are, we are really, Murray and I love doing this. We would do it if we were alone in a room so that people will come and do it with us is just a great gift to us. So we are really grateful that you have come tonight. Uh, we always have this dream and we never quite get it done that we'll meet one another. You know, don't sit with the people that you usually sit in synagogue or church with, but meet somebody else while you're here tonight would be cool. Uh, this is part one. We're gathering again in, it's next Tuesday, right? Okay, Yes. Uh, we'll be at Temple Israel next week, and we're going to talk about the miracles. There are miracles in the Bible, and uh, a lot of people are interested in that today, and we're going to talk about sort of our perspective and take on that. Are they real? Is that symbolic of something? Are some real and some symbolic? What does all that mean? And what's the lesson in all of that? And that'll be uh, great fun uh, to talk about. So we hope that we will see you next week. If you don't know how to get to Temple Israel, take Providence Road till you see it on the left. It's not hard. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> really is.